Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a image, in this particular case it's a tank, kind of rotate its orientation to point towards the uh, player's mouse. And this is something that you see in a lot of games. In side scrollers you might have a player who's holding a weapon and the weapon will move and point to the mouse as the player you know, aims at things. Or you might have in this case a tank where the top of the tank might point towards your mouse and the bottom of the tank kind of has a different orientation based on how you're driving. But that's what I'm going to kind of cover. It's super basic in this video, but you can take this idea and kind of expand upon it to target any type of object and find the angle between two of them. So if you haven't already seen my other video where I set up my basic parcel game project, you might want to watch that or else you might be kind of lost as to how this is all working behind the scenes. But I'm just going to dive into the code and kind of explain what I'm, what I'm doing to kind of get this tank to follow my mouse cursor. So starting off in index.js, the main thing that has changed from the base project is now my state has a, a mouse property, which I can keep track of the current X and Y location as I move the mouse. And then I have a tank property where I'm keeping track of the tank's X and Y position in its rotation. And the tank doesn't actually move in any orientation, it just rotates. So this is kind of the property we need to keep track of. So with that being said, I'm also importing a tank file at the top, which kind of encapsulates my logic for how the tank updates and how it draws. And I will cover that in just a second. Let me finish talking about the index where I'm kind of gluing it all together. So obviously as the player is moving the mouse around, we need to kind of keep track of where that mouse X and Y location is. And in the browser, we can simply do window.addEventListener and then say on a mouse move event, we basically update the state to keep track of the X and Y coordinates of the player's mouse. And if you were to print this out or use your debugger, you'll see that event has a client X and a client Y, which basically represents where the player is pointing at on the screen. Um, and to further exemplify that, top left corner is 0, 0, and as I move down, my Y coordinates become positive. So this might be like positive 1,000. Then as I move to the right, my X coordinates are increasing, so that might be positive 1,000 over here. So nothing, nothing too special about that. And you can add event listeners for other things, such as like keyboard events or click events or touch events if you're doing mobile. But for right now, we're just going to cover mouse move because that's all we really need to get this working. And then finally, we have our basic game loop, which I explained in the previous video. But the main thing that changes is we're doing a tank update and a tank draw and passing it the state so that we know where to draw the tank and how to draw it and what orientation it should be. So hopefully all of this makes sense in the index.js. Let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this project, which is the tank.js file. Another thing that's different that I haven't explained yet is how do you load in assets using Parcel? Basically, you have the ability to import a file or a PNG or a JPEG or whatever inside Parcel and behind the scenes Parcel is going to grab that file, rename it and put it in your build folder or your disk folder here. So you see here we have tank 57188 whatever that is. Um, so basically now this tank image source is going to be a reference to where you need to load that image. So we're going to be using that to know how and where to load in the tank image. And once we declare that, we can simply declare a new JavaScript image, which is what you're going to have to do if you want to display images in your game. And the one takeaway about using this new image um, object or class is that it's async. So the moment you set the source to the image, or when, the moment you set the source of the image to that tank path, it's going to try to fetch that in your browser. So if I go to my net network tab here, I can kind of show that. If I go to network, type in tank, and refresh the page, um, you'll see, sorry, it's being hidden by my console down here. You'll see that it's fetching a tank PNG from localhost 1234 slash tank. And that is basically what this code is doing. It's saying make an image object, set the source to that tank path, and then when it's done actually loading, because this should take up to you know a minute or a couple seconds depending on how big the image is, 
when it's done loading, we're basically just setting a Boolean from image loaded from false to true. And what this allows us to do is inside of your game loop or whatever, you could simply start drawing or stop drawing based on if all the images are loaded. And this is really basic. And in fact, I'm not even using image loaded here. You see how it's kind of grayed out. Technically in here, I'd probably say if the image is not loaded, then don't draw anything because this would probably crash at this point. But luckily we're running locally. So this all like loads pretty quick and we don't have to worry about this code. So kind of just ignore this for now, but we'll all expand upon this in another video to show you how you can load in a ton of different images and maybe show a, a loader progress bar when you're doing that. All right, so the main thing that this video is about is basically how do you set the rotation to point the tank to rotate towards the mouse? And if you're familiar with geometry and math, it might be pretty simple to you. I'm not going to dive into the details of how this works, but basically there's a function called ATAN2, ARCTAN2. And what that does is you can pass it in X and Y location and, and it will return you the degrees from the starting point to your destination point. So what we do is we say our target point is the mouse subtracted by our tank's location. And that is the first parameter of that ATAN2. And the second parameter of ATAN2 is the Y direction. So state mouse Y minus the state tank Y. And then one thing you'll need to know is that since positive Y goes down, kind of the opposite when it comes to uh, typical, typical Cartesian coordinates. So what we need to do is negate this here so that we get the correct angle. Otherwise your tank is going to be pointing in the opposite direction of your mouse. All right, so that's pretty much how it works. As the player moves the mouse, these state variables update. We get the angle between the tank and the mouse and the tank and the mouse, and then we set that to tank rotation here. Now later on, when we draw the tank, using HTML5, this is kind of the technique. Typically, you want to save your context first because these are manipulating your context. So if you forget to restore and save, then every other image is going to be rotated as well. So if you do rotation or translation or any type of perspective transform, you need to make sure you save your context. And then at the end, when you're done, restore your context. Secondly, this is the kind of confusing part, is you need to translate your canvas to be on top of the tanks. So basically you do translate X and Y of the tank. Once you've translated your canvas to be over the tank, you can then rotate it based on that rotation you just determined up here in the update. And that will basically set up the context to be able to render your tank in a particular um, rotation at a spot. And then finally, we draw the tank image here. So context.draw image. And the thing that's kind of important here is you need to make sure that you're doing the width of the image. In this case, I think it's 128 pixels by 128 pixels. And you want to make sure you kind of offset the image you're drawing so that the origin is directly in the center of your image. Otherwise, if I don't do that, you're going to get some strange behavior. So I'll just go ahead and set that to zero and zero. Bear with me one second. All right. So now as I rotate this, you'll notice that the tank is actually rotating based on a origin of the top left corner of the image. Whereas we want it to rotate along the center of the image. And that's pretty much how you do it. Quick recap again is as you move the mouse, we're updating the rotation. And then as we draw, we're translating the canvas to a particular point. We're rotating that canvas to match that tank's rotation that we just figured out. And then we draw our image with a little bit of offset so that we rotate it along the center origin of our image. And then finally, we restore our canvas or context back to what it was so we don't affect other images that might be drawing or rectangles. So that wraps up this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback on the way I'm doing this stuff, feel free to chime in. Or if you have any suggestions on future videos that I can make to kind of explain different game related mechanics or topics, feel free to uh, leave a comment. And again, all of my code that I do in my YouTube videos are posted in this Git repo location. So I'll post this in the description of the video. Feel free to kind of look through this and find the folder that I had open during this video so you can find the actual code 
that you might want to use as you're learning how to make a game in HTML5.